Hello, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to reinstall Microsoft Windows Vista onto a Dell machine. Um, most of the steps are the same if you have a different manufacturer, but today I'm going to be doing a Dell. Um, so in order to do it, you're going to have your machine physically healthy, of course. It's not going to work if the machine is physically broken. I have it open because I have put a uh, new hard drive in here to replace a broken one. Anyway, um, getting back to it. With a Dell, uh, they have a magic button uh, on the keyboard if you tap F12 right after you hit power. Let me show you what happens. So, first off, I'm going to come down here and I'll hit the power button. Then up here I'm going to begin tapping F12 on the keyboard. And it brings up the Dell boot menu. Uh, Dells have behaved that way since probably, I'm going to say roughly 2003. Um, so I'm a professional technician and uh, when I work on Dells in the field this is always a um, uh, consistent behavior for them. When it brings you up to the boot menu, on this particular machine it gives me a few different choices but consistently it will give you the option, You, I should say usually 99% of the time it'll give you the option for to boot from the CD drive or from the hard drive. Since we're reloading the hard drive using a CD, we're definitely going to want to highlight the CD drive. Now to show you the disk, you're going to want to use the disk that goes along with the sticker that you have. Now this particular disk is a special disk that came from Dell it says Windows Vista Home Basic 32-bit Service Pack 2, but this is actually one of very few disks that was uh, put together as a collaboration between Dell and Microsoft, and it's capable of doing um, Windows Vista, Home Basic, as well as Home Premium, and Ultimate. All of them must be Vista, though. Anyway, this cannot do Vista business, and not all of the Vista disks are capable of this, it is really just a handful of the uh, Windows Vista disks that are capable of doing it. So if it's if it's something that you're looking for, be sure that you get the appropriate one that's advertised that way. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and take my disk and carefully insert it into my CD drive. Now that it's in, I've highlighted to boot to the CD drive, as you can see on the top onboard or USB CD drive. And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to begin talking to the drive. It says press any key to boot to CD or DVD so I, I went ahead and pressed the enter key and now it's going to begin talking to that CD. So what it's going to be doing at this point is it's going to be taking files from the CD drive, loading them on down into the hard drive and it's going to be asking us a few different questions on the screen. It's pretty easy. I'm just going to walk you through uh, the beginning of it because this is really the only stuff that um, you would have to know. If you know about tapping the F12 key, that's 90% of the thing right there. Um, give it a second here. It says Windows is loading files there on the bottom. Come on. This will just take another few seconds. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to choose My Language is English. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the mouse, pick that. And then on the next screen we just have to approve of the fact that we chose English. Then we're going to click Install Now. It's going to pause again.
Okay, so this screen is interesting. Uh, normally it would just say which version you had, Vista Home Basic or Vista Home Premium or Vista Ultimate, whatever. Since this disc is, um, um, like I say, kind of a super disc, uh, it's capable of doing Vista Home Basic, Home Premium, or Vista Ultimate, and it can do all the service packs as well, since there's only two service packs for Vista. So this disc is very convenient. Uh, it takes care of almost any computer out there. There's so few Vista businesses business computers out there that this disc can do just about anything. Um, anyway, you're going to have to hit I, I accept the license terms and hope to God that none of them are anything too uh, painful. Then you'll hit next. Um, in my experience, the upgrade never really works great. We get a lot of people that call us to fix computers because they try to do the upgrade and things just don't work properly afterwards. So I usually recommend, as opposed to upgrading, I usually recommend that people just back up the files that they really need to keep to a thumb drive or an external hard drive and then use the custom option. Under custom, I'm going to go ahead and click on it here. It's going to come up with the hard drives that you have, the partitions that are on them. Um, the disk number is going to actually be, you know, if you have five hard drives in there, it's going to have disk zero, disk one, disk two, etc., etc. If you have one hard drive, and multiple partitions on it, it's going to show up as disk zero, and there may be partition one, partition two, etc. Be sure when you're doing this that you do not have any sort of external hard drives plugged in or flash drives, or you might accidentally erase all your stuff. Anyway, so um, since this is one hard drive with one partition, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight it, click on drive options, make sure that the partition is highlighted, then I'm going to choose delete. It's going to say all the data stored on this will be permanently deleted and it just needs us to approve it. And now we have an empty hard drive. So now that we have an empty hard drive ready to rock, I'm just going to hit next. And it begins copying files. Um, the rest of it, you can go make a sandwich, watch a TV show, because it will take a little while. At the end of it, it's going to ask you pretty simple questions. It's going to ask you what you want for a username, you know, what kind of uh, picture you want. Uh, background you want, what time zone you're in. The rest of it is pretty much idiot proof. Uh, one thing that is noteworthy is that this disk is going to install your Windows operating system and it's going to install your service packs. It is not going to install all of your drivers. It will install all of the drivers that happen to be in the Microsoft driver library, which is a pile of them. For, for many people it, it actually installs everything you need. It might install your video, your audio, your network drivers, all that stuff. But if it doesn't, maybe your audio doesn't work, for example. You would just need to go to your manufacturer's website, Dell.com or HP.com or whoever, and download the appropriate driver. Um, in my experience, it usually takes about five minutes, and um, then it's resolved. Hopefully it's not your internet or your network card driver that you need. If that ends up being the case, you may need to uh, enroll the... Uh, support of a friend's computer to download it on theirs and then transfer it over to yours using a thumb drive or CD or whatever you're comfortable with. Hope you like the video. Um, post any questions if you need help.